In our modern society, we rely almost entirely on fossil fuels for our transportation needs. But what happens when these fuels run out? Technologies such as hydrogen fuel cells and electric cars are being developed as possibilities for the future. But one existing vehicle technology can help eliminate at least some of our dependence on oil. And as simple as it may sound, that technology is the diesel engine. The way the diesel engine is designed, it can run on a variety of fuels. There are two alternative fuel options that are most common. You can either convert the fuel or convert the vehicle to accept an alternative fuel. We are going to discuss converting the vehicle. First step in this process is, of course, gathering the waste oil. Running fresh vegetable oil is an option and does not require any processing, but is much more expensive than even the priciest diesel fuel. We are going to take what would be a waste product anyway and turn it into a usable fuel. There are many different collection strategies. One option is to gather up the oil in, contain in the containers it came in originally. This is a good method for smaller cars or if there is a limited amount of space to work with. My preferred method of collection is to gather an entire barrel at once. The method I use is a drill powered pump. Two drill batteries usually last long enough to fill an entire barrel. This way you don't have to rely on a power source being present. Now that we've discussed collection, we will move on to filtration. This is by far the most important process, even more important than proper heating in the vehicle. All of the water and free fatty acids, as well as the obvious food particles, must be removed prior to use in the vehicle. There are so many different techniques for doing this that it would be impossible to list all of them. So I will just mention what I use. The typical three barrel heat and settle method. You have a dirty barrel, a settling barrel, and a clean barrel. The oil is collected in the dirty barrel, goes through an initial 100 micron filter, gets heated up, settles for at least 8 hours, and then is pumped through a 2 micron polishing filter. As you can see, there is a clear color separation between the water on the bottom and the oil on the top. When this level gets close to the valve, the water on the bottom is emptied out to make room for more to settle out. Our system starts up here, in the storage barrel inside the van. The valve and hose on the left lead directly down into the stock tank, which is heated to accept vegetable oil. This van runs a custom two-tank system. The front tank is heated for vegetable oil, the back tank is just a stock diesel tank. Now we're going to take a look at the underside of the van. Here you can see how the tank is heated. There are coolant lines that run through a copper coil inside the tank to heat all of the fuel at once. On the right, you have the filter, which has a coolant line wrapped around it, which warms the fuel before it enters a hose and hose fuel line. How the hose and hose fuel line works is it is a coolant hose surrounding an aluminum fuel line, which runs up to the front of the van. And here you have another view of the tank and the filter. And this is the hose and hose fuel line again, the front of it. And it runs up into what is called a flat plate heat exchanger. It takes the hottest coolant right out of the engine and warms the fuel one last time before the fuel goes into the switch. And up here is the stock valve that came with the van simply switches between the two tanks, front and rear, and I will now show you how the inside controls work. Since the van came stock with two tanks, operation is fairly straightforward. All I did was add a temperature gauge to ensure proper switch over time. Once the temperature gauge reads 180 degrees, you throw the switch to the front tank, which switches over to vegetable oil. If you switch too early, the van could die. Uh, the viscosity in vegetable oil when it's at a low temperature is too high, it can't flow through the injectors, so it needs to be at the proper operating temperature. The vehicle must be stopped and started on diesel fuel. If you stop it on vegetable oil, the next time you go to start it up, it won't crank over. Uh, many systems have a buzzer or some other type of warning to say that you didn't switch over. However, this one relies entirely on the operator knowing what they're doing. When you flip the switch, the fuel gauge switches as well. 
you can see how, how much fuel is in each tank just by flipping a switch. This is a nice thing about having the stock fuel system be a two tank system.